Nigeria has experienced two recessions in the past decade, each exposing deep-rooted structural vulnerabilities that must be addressed with renewed urgency. Hence, today's challenges demand a new approach centered on collaboration to promote growth, competitiveness, and stability. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Focus on where we bring key discussions from the 30th Nigerian Economic Summit. I'm Aki Obakeye. Over the next half hour, we shall spotlight the role of public and private sector players in achieving sustainable economic growth for Nigeria. It's the 30th Nigerian Economic Summit. Here gathered are regional and global leaders from government, business, civil society, and the social sector, among others. The focus, achieving sustainable growth for Nigeria and Africa at large. The three-day event provides the platform for pressing issues to be addressed, underscoring the summit's critical role in facilitating meaningful discussions that shape the trajectory of economic development. Today's challenges demand a new approach centered on collaboration to promote growth, competitiveness, and stability. While our nation has made significant strides, our challenges are also very clear. Between problems of income inequality and multidimensional poverty continue to cast a long shadow over our progress. Nigeria struggle with an uneven distribution of resources, microeconomic instability, and institutional fragility that prevents us from reaching our full potential. The task before us, therefore, is to forge decisive reforms that can break these cycles of stagnation and pave the way for equitable growth. Since our recovery from the 2016 economic recession, the Nigerian economy has shown resilience, but still remains fragile. In 2023, real GDP growth slowed to 2.74%, down from the 3.1% that was recorded in 2022, thus highlighting the difficulty of sustaining momentum among persistent structural challenges. These challenges include security concerns, human capital deficiencies, and inadequate infrastructure. And they've created a complex environment that stifles business and limits economic growth. The policy reforms of 2023, particularly concerning the first subsidy and exchange rate liberalization, were needed critical steps. These reforms end praise internationally. They improve our credit outlook, and they also have helped to attract foreign direct investment. We have convened at a difficult time to deal with difficult conversations between a cost of living crisis and a cost of doing business crisis. Policy must be calibrated in such a way that they are urgent, they are intense, they are focused, they are, f they are driving short-term results in quick iterations, and we are providing a kind of massive, well-calibrated feedback so that policy gives forward guidance to a well set of bundled policies sequenced in such a way that investors and business can take you and we can together move faster out of this bump on the road back towards consolidation and then into economic acceleration. Rightly pointed out, government officials speak to ongoing efforts at addressing some of these issues, both short and long term. Between last year's summit and today, we have had a 2.7 trillion naira supplementary budget, a 28.77 2024 uh, annual budget, and an amend a 6.2 trillion naira amendment which incorporated the renewed up infrastructure fund into the budget. The three budgets demonstrate our commitment to restoration of macroeconomic stability. 
funding our priorities such as security, agriculture, and food security, infrastructure, human capital development, social investment, as well as innovation and the creative economy. Innovative measures include expansion of consumer credit to support manufacturing and access to affordable credits, mortgage reform to expand access to housing, student loans funding, CNG penetration as expansion program, as well as digitization of government services. All intended to, among others, expand the economy, reduce deficit, and attain an increase in capital spending. These measures are complemented by a host of trade and fiscal reforms, some of which Ni have spoken about. In addition, the decision to accept NARA payment for crude oil for domestic refiners and the over subscription of the domestic dollar bond issued are both expressions of confidence in both our NERA and growing confidence in our economy. We have thus prioritized investment in critical infrastructure, enhance our social safety needs, and promote innovation across all sectors. I am pleased to report that we are making significant strides in addressing several key issues, including regulatory bottlenecks and ease of doing business challenges. This progress will instill confidence in our collective ability to overcome those challenges. Our objective is to ensure that the Nigerian economy is inclusive, where small and medium-sized enterprises can thrive alongside large corporations, and where every citizen, regardless of location or background, can benefit from economic opportunities. We have initiated various programs, such as the MSME hubs and single-digit loans for manufacturers designed to provide entrepreneurs with the support they need to succeed. We have also introduced the credit corporation to offer our workers consumer loans with single-digit interest. These initiatives collectively will boost the economy and ensure it remains competitive in Africa and globally. I want to emphasize that the, challenge, that the challenges before us, while significant, are manageable and can be overcome with the right policies, the right partnerships, and the right level of commitment. Nigeria can emerge stronger, more competitive, and more resilient. The Nigerian Economic Summit remains invaluable for fostering the dialogue and collaboration needed to move our country forward. Let us use this platform to discuss and make actionable recommendations that will inform policy to drive growth, enhance competitiveness, and secure long-term stability for Nigeria. Sometimes we expect that the trade-off between the real sector, high interest rates, and of course, uh, the whole issue of inflation could be a timing issue. And ultimately, we hope it goes that way. That is, that as inflation begins to moderate, interest rates start to come down. And of course, it's a lot easier for the productive sector to operate. So that is really the hope, and, and that's the trend that we expect we will, we will get to in the not-too-distant future. According to the World Bank's chief economist, some of the reforms are yielding fruits. But he has this to say to Nigeria. Learn from your policy mistakes. Two, let markets determine the exchange rate. Three, keep public debt sustainable. Four, adopt oil price-based fiscal rules. Five, make accounting and allocation of oil revenues fully, completely, painfully transparent. Six, Six, devise a public investment program that promotes the diversification of the economy. Seven, above all, and this is the difference between the Norwegian experience and the Nigerian experience, stay the course. Just stay the course. It might take a decade to, re to reap the dividends, but if you stay the course, you will surely reap the rewards. Surely, as surely as night follows day. The president's signature reforms are essential. 
They are essential to break from the past and to chart a more hopeful course for all Nigerians. These include the unification of what used to be multiple exchange rates. They include allowing that unified exchange rate to be determined by the market. And of course, they include the elimination of fuel subsidies. The summit had several issues on the front burner, with panel sessions having speakers do justice to the discussions. With Nigeria facing multifaceted challenges, how well does collaboration play in achieving sustainable growth? The entire program is jointly or co-hosted by both the federal government of Nigeria and the, the organized private sector. So we see that, um, and that level of public-private partnership already exists. The whole idea is how will the government provide the kind of confidence, comfort and clarity for the private sector because really transformation cannot really be done by government by the private sector or the non-state actors. We need collaborative action from all the different stakeholders, government, private sector, academia, um, business community, um, you know, and every other the civil society and all of that for them to come together to look at um, the Nigerian situation and see where we're going, where we should be headed and how we can get there. At the heart of its advocacy efforts, the Nigeria Economic Summit Group believes the summit remains pivotal to driving a collaborative action for growth, competitiveness and stability. And that's all we can take on this episode of Focus on Amaki Obake. Until next time, bye for now.